But, okay, I just want to say thank you for everyone to coming, for coming this to the evening when it's so warm. As John mentioned, we do have water in the back. Um, we have a business portion of this meeting. We're going to start with at 6, and then we always going to join us to talk about the green flood maps uh, when we adjourn the business section of the meeting. So, I'd like to call into order, um, a course to order business. I'd like to just have people go down through the table and introduce themselves. There we go. Carol Sherman. Sure. Carol Sherman. Mm -hmm. uh, my name is Pam Skansky, and I'm the chairman of the committee this year. I'm John Dykstra. I'm the uh, site board rep. Holly Mudd. I just joined. I'm Charles Cadwell. I'm Bill Yunker. And I'm Kate Bauer And I'll back on as the at large member. So thank you, everybody. So that you can... Okay, super. Thank you. Um, I think the next the first order of business we have is approval of the minutes from the uh, last meeting. I think they were circulated. Um, I didn't have any comments, but did anyone else on the committee have any changes or suggestions? Okay, is there a motion to approve? I move to approve. Second. 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 Okay, all those in favor? Uh, some of us have to abstain because we weren't part of yeah. the committee at that. Exactly. That are the Okay, um, I, one thing I wanted to just say thank you to the DPW for working to flatten the ramps at uh, Proctor and Broadway because they were a little bit steep in the first rendition, but they seem to be working better now that they're flatter with the blacktop they couldn't get there. So I want to say thanks to you. So the next section of the meeting is for public comment on anything that's not on the agenda. And we do have a number of people here. I'm not sure how many topics are, but if it gets to be long we may have to limit the speaking time for people so i will start with things that are not on the agenda okay a little bit well, we start like go ahead okay question on the water quality and the testing and those big signs which have pretty much been blank that we put up a number of years ago uh are they still needed and is testing results still have i think it's happening but where is it being reported and do we still need those oh we absolutely need to sign the testing is done uh twice a week uh, at uh, four different locations along the beach, uh, at, or actually two locations along the beach, at the main beach, uh, uh, just down from the, uh, uh, from the tides, between the tides and the river, uh, and on the west end. Uh, those results are uh, posted uh, on the main healthy beach site, as well as the town site, if they are in exceedance, uh, they are tested the next day. If they remain in exceedance, there is a notice placed on the boards, just as it always was. So those boards are still where you would go to see if there was a posted notice. Okay, thanks. So there is, there will be some use. Luckily, so far, they haven't needed to post anything like that. That's so correct. The water's, the water's good. Okay. 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 What about the rivers? The rivers uh, remain posted permanently. As you remember last year, uh, because of the amount of uh, animal activity in our marshes and the fact that the enterococci bacteria that we use to measure the presence of bacteria are known to multiply within the marshes, uh, marsh waters are, are consistently high. And therefore, rather than test and post, take down and put up while we, along with uh, agreement of made healthy beaches uh, had placed a permanent posting on the beach water. Now, what we are doing, this gets into a long discussion, but having said that, I need to say that we are adding an additional test to the rivers, and that test is for human bacteria. Uh, it, again, as I mentioned, the enterococci, which is this flag bacteria, does not necessarily mean the water's unsafe. Well, because of interspecies barriers, uh, uh, the intestinal bacteria from uh, deer and moose and rabbits and seagulls are not as dangerous to humans as a human intestinal bacteria. That's the issue. The reason they call entero flag bacteria is they're cheap to measure. So they're measuring the entero and they say when it gets above this magic number, if there is human present, then it would be a problem. So that's always been the measure. That's how the flag works. Because our rivers are always high, we have started testing for human to see if human is present. If we see that human is present, then we will also flag on the rivers 
if that bacteria gets hot, when the, that would be most of the time, because the bacteria is almost always hot. It always has been. I've swum in that river my whole life, and the bacteria has not gone up. It is a normal part of a marsh environment. But, uh, so, so that's kind of where we are. Uh, well, sure. Yes. I'll get it to Okay, thanks, sir. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. You should go next. Me? Yeah. You want me to stand up? Sure, because I think it's hard for people yeah. to hear because cans and everything. Sorry, I cut the mic. I'll yeah. to try to project. Yeah. Uh, Cliff Mix, 797 King Tire. I wanted to follow up on something I brought before this committee in May. You know, I know a number of your views. And that issue is people climbing on sea runs. The seawalls on their best day, when they are in perfect condition, the high beach, but with the storms we had in January, they're extremely hazardous. There are boulders dangling, there are boulders cantilevered over open sand. It's a hazard. I brought this up in fact. I was told that there would be an article in a newsletter. I may have missed it, but I haven't seen the newsletter. I was told that I would speak with the CSO. Sorry, that doesn't fly. Two weeks ago, there were eight people, five teenagers and three adults, on the very top of my neighbor's stool, 20 feet above the beach. And they trespassed across their lawn to get them. I was loose. Wasn't my property, so I didn't feel it was appropriate for me to say anything. And lo and behold, there's a CSO coming down the beach, 20 yards from these people. Walked right by him, didn't say a thing. Mm-hmm. So when he got to me, I educated him about the seawalls. And there's a disconnect here somewhere. Your own ordinance, section C, item K, no climbing, sitting, or standing on the rocks or seawalls adjacent to the beach. No. The beach use agreement has the same thing. All of this falls on the property of the expense, the liability, and everything that goes along with it. How does not want to know anything about the single? But the town has an obligation to enforce the rules that are in that beach use agreement. And there's failing miserably. And I'd like to know what you're going to do about it, because clearly what I said in May gone nowhere. And I'm sorry if I'm coming on a little strong, but I don't want to get sued because some kid gets crushed by a 400 pound bowl. And I don't think I'm being over dramatic here. Can you look to me? Is that me? I'm, I'm your trust. Yeah, go ahead. First of all, I, I feel your pain. I've heard what you said. I apologize that it was not made clear to all of the CSOs that they should mention to folks when they see them on the seawall to please not be on the seawalls and to get death. They've been instructed that if they, those folks, resist that, then they are to call in the communications to have someone uh, come and check it out. So, I mean, some of the CSOs are great. I don't come. They're great. The number of them have been here a number of years, they get it. Some are more assertive than others. And some of them are brand new. And this kid didn't have a clue when I was talking. Yeah, that's not right there. That was a failure. I accept it. Uh, and we're, we're working. Well, that's what can be spec. That's what I was calling Matt. Indeed, it was. You're unfortunate. I need to tell you that again. But uh, it has gotten the attention. It has been brought forward. Well, it's just local attention. Because someone's going to get hurt. Why not? One might consider posting something. I've done that. But doesn't do any good. Oh, people are people. I, people do what the hell they want when they come here. You have to try Bob Wire, but that's, you know, doing I'm not going to raise your wire, Andrew. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Oh, talking I'm about not my... I'm not kidding. I'm just not. You want to talk about liability on a daily basis? Yeah. I pull dirty diapers out of my seat. Yeah. People use my seawall as a public toilet. I hear you. And you, and you guys would spend a ton of money and time on bacteria on this beach. Yes. And the monitoring by the town, it's not happening. I'm sorry. The CSOs, again, some of them are great. They walk where the level of the water is. If it's 80 yards at low tide, that's where they walk. If it's high tide and then the rest of the sea walk, that's where they walk. They cannot possibly see what is going on on that beach. 
person by birth and color. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. But, um, since they told me about... Oh, you need to stand, please. please. Stand up. It's really hard for people to hear. I'm sorry. your name yeah. and your address, please. Oh, Alton Cooper, Cleanware 14th, Present Avenue. Thank you. Uh, no, I have one concern. And I know it's either been written up on Facebook or whatever, it's that the holes that are being dumped on the sand, and I'm risking a lot if there's a death with a child. So today, as I was sitting on the beach, there's some people digging holes that were so deep. Okay. It was terrified, and little, little kids in them. And I don't know whose place it is. I kept saying, Mother, should I say something? Should I say something, you know? Um, and I don't know, I see the, the police who walk up and down the beach. Uh, I don't know if it's the care responsibility to go into the sun and say, gee, this hole's very deep, or be you know, very careful. I don't know how that works, but um, so I think that a lot of the holes are really deep are left without anybody chilling in love and it's a really great care to get. Uh, I'm more concerned that somebody in the young child is really going to say, sure, unless we somehow get an app there to do it, to the it to the land tourism to keep from the there that they have to be careful. Yeah, yeah, unfortunately, the only uh, requirement in terms of the Pichu's ordinance is that the holes be filled, and they're not being filled, but you can appreciate that that's a little difficult to uh, uh, to police, but I, I certainly hear your pain. I mean, the, the people that walk on the beach, we spoke into Rich in the last day, and uh, I mean, is it possible for them when they see these holes that have been a dog so deep, just to go with it, to even the kids and parents and very nice to say, Chief, when you're done, would you mind very much, please uh, fill it in again, because we know that people have gotten hurt or broken an anchor uh, walking on the beach, and maybe at the same time tell them that there is a danger to it, so you have to be extremely careful. I mean, I don't think that's hard, and maybe I know with every uh, place where people walk in, they have signs of a chicken do tank for maybe go over signs, test them up and say, you know, please watch your kids, please be careful. I mean, I, I, I love it. Sign, signs are a four letter you word, know, four ways in one, that was route. So it's a, uh, uh, like, yeah, thank you. Yeah, PCO, so it's good. I will say one thing that I, I agree with you about that. I mean, I just I almost turned my ankle a couple of times. And uh, the other thing, what I tend to do is go up. Particularly if I see a family grouping, I blame it on the birds, the little baby birds. I tell them, please get the kids interested. Could you please make sure you fill the holes in? Because in fact, we've got these little tiny baby and basic species birds. They're adorable, and if they tumble into that hole, they're not going to ever be able to get out. They're just going to have to wait till the tide comes in. So it's another possibility if you're talking to me. I, I have no shame about walking up to somebody and saying, "Hey, you know." It's a good thing for crowdsourcing. <laughs> I'm not sure it works, but it's worth trying. Okay, okay. here's a problem. Just thanks, well, Kate. Fred, just to follow. Can you see it? Oh, yeah. I think when they came in, I'm sure. Yeah, <laughs> that's uh, Fred. Fred Stafford, they not two keys right away. And John, I was just wondering with the CSOs and the holes, right? because I was going to mention that as well. It's crazy. I mean, the trenches. Yeah. And they're yeah. using spades and not using little plastic shovels. Right. Yeah. And uh, is it, are the CSOs responsible for going up to these people when they see this stuff and telling them they need to fill them in? Because it doesn't appear that they are. What they're responsible for. It's uh, That's certainly something we can underscore to them to please have them approach people that are digging holes and fill them in. I remind them that they need to be filled in. So I've, I've taken that down as another faction to try to communicate to the CSOs. Yeah, I mean, not to pick on the CSOs, but another time last week, I witnessed uh, four adults playing bocce ball with beers in their hands, and the CSO came by. It looked like he said something to them, but then he just walked on and they just what? kept drinking, and then in fact, a friend of theirs brought more down. And so, people at least need to be discreet. I said, did you do that? Adult sippy cups or something. Yeah, I was the thing. But they just, you know, it's, didn't seem to do it. So, again, not to pick on the CSRs, but of course, things that aren't being enforced. Mm -hmm. Okay, are there any other comments for things that aren't on the agenda? Go ahead. Hi, Bill Ben Thais, I'm going to Harbor Road. At the main meeting, there was some discussion regarding overnight parking, where our kids, I wait, 
looking out there were some that's restricting that. And there are no signs restricting for that question along that area. And just want to have something that Chen can show to address to the police department. Because there's certain rare vehicles that camp out on Kings Highway, and that's a list of the hard road. I rely on driving my vehicles to the beach park there. I've found my own way of making sure that I can get a car there on a daily basis, not overnight parking. But for those who are traveling to the beach and, and find no parking because our vehicle is parked there overnight, uh, certainly so you can use that thing should be addressed. So, be. That's what the drains and hence me. Good to know that. Please go through the down. Okay, any other comments? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, I'm going to move on to committee reports now. And the first one is public safety. Ms. Chaz is uh, going to be the chair of the chair. Thank you, Cameron. I've been the chair for four days now. Yeah. No, no. So, but I've um, spent the time to um, talk to the last year's chair, uh, Barry Engel, and the two volunteer committee members, we had Tom Adler and uh, Clark LeMay. Uh, I mean, so I've got a pretty good sense of what. Can you speak up a little louder? I'm seeing people in the back that are having a hard time. So I think I've got a pretty good sense of what the issues were. Before the last two comments, I would have said that the safety issues at the beach are all about traffic. Now I appreciate that we have other other concerns as well. But and the traffic, the main traffic concern is uh, that I've heard about is speeding. And there's a bunch of things the town is doing. They have kept the um, speed humps on the Beaufort Road. They don't have the um, electronic speed signs up on Dyke Road or other places yet, and um, there are explanations for that, but to my view, that's something that this group needs to push them on to get them up now and get them up earlier next year. It's not like July 1st coming is a surprise every year. Uh, so, um, is that just the, the um, I learned that the town only has two police officers on duty patrolling the entire town at any point, so they can't hang out over here to enforce the speed laws. It has to be public awareness and and uh, in action. So things like um, the painting the crosswalks, the uh, the electronic speed signs to help people's problem. And the town has, um, will give you for free if you want, put in your yard, no need to speed sign. To pick them up at the police station, uh, they had about a dozen of them an hour ago and they told me they were more in the closet. So. Uh, Put it close to the road, and they actually slow people down too. They don't like hit. Um, but um, the other thing that um, the town, um, I think, needs to work on is using social media. They put things on their website, but Google cool Maps goes to the town's website. And so I think um, Chief of Police told me that they've got somebody working at ways where they can be on social media that the rest of us might look at. Uh, and that's something that this advisory committee could do as well, I think, uh, to help um, raise awareness of things we are worried about, whether it's seawall climbing or speeding and road safety or um, people walking on the right and biking on the left uh, that just complicates things um, for drivers and other walkers and bicyclists. Um, since we're um, new, the, um, the two volunteer uh, members of the committee from last year have agreed to continue. Uh, but if there are other people who want to participate in our conversations about this, I'm happy to have you join us. Um, we don't have any scheduled meetings, but if you contact me, and I guess we have email addresses on the website. Well, I, I don't know if that's right. Event. Um, Come up and talk to you. Ed. Yeah, see me afterwards, and uh, I'm here all summer. Um, I think um, other thing that people have talked about so far is um, trying to reach out and work more with the community house so that we can get engaged with kids about what they're doing in the streets um, and or their parents who are, who are dropping them there. Uh, but again, much about communications and awareness raising as much as um, any, um, we're not going to enforce our way to safe streets here. You know, everybody has to participate and do that. Uh, and I think we can sort out some among ourselves how we handle things like the seawall issues among our different committees. But it's, I appreciate hearing about it. I'm a beachfront owner, and I've got a seawall that looks precarious. And um, but I'm at the west end where we don't have anybody, my tenants, on the beach. Yeah, um, can do that. I can speak to them. That's all I meant. Perfect. Thanks a lot, Chess. 
Um, the next topic is natural resources, and we sort of have two phases of this report. Bill Yoker is just taking over that committee, but we also have Emily Fuss, who is the Shorebird Volunteer Coordinator. And I was going to have Emily come first, and then you would like to carry Fort Philip. That works for you. Yes, I Yes, I actually when she comes up, we just kind of focus on I I can simply like I do it was Yes. Yes. All right. Hi, everyone. Um, thank you so much for giving me this time this evening. Speak up. You speak up. Okay. How's this? Stay up. Stay up. How's this? Good. All right. Um, thank you so much for giving me the time this evening. Um, I wanted to introduce myself and give you an update on the and Clovers down at Moose Rocks Beach. Um, so this is just an overview of what we'll be discussing this evening. Um, so a little bit about me. Um, so my name is Emily McCormick. I'm the Shorebird Volunteer Coordinator, or SBC for short, for the town of Finney Bumport for this summer. Um, just a little about me. I'm from Plattsburgh, New York. I graduated from St. Lawrence University in 2021 with a Bachelor's of Science in Biology. Um, I worked as a research technician out of the Syracuse VA Medical Center for a year before moving to Portsmouth, New Hampshire, where I currently reside. Um, I, my first year in Portsmouth, I worked as a quality control microbiologist, and I'm currently pursuing my master's of public health from the University College Cork in Ireland, where I'll be graduating next summer. Um, and I love being outdoors, so I enjoy swimming, hiking, biking, uh, walking, birding with dwarfs. Um, but I also enjoy reading and baking. Next day. <laughs> um, so Goose Rocks Beach is host to piping plovers uh, during their breeding season. Um, so they come here for about from mid-March through to September uh, before they move on to migrate to Mexico. Uh, so piping plovers are endangered on a state level and they're federally threatened, so they are a protected species. Um, these birds, along with other threatened or endangered shorebirds like least terns, need protection and they need monitoring because of their status. Uh, piping plovers are endangered for a host of reasons, um, including Coastal development, uh, this decreases their available habitat um, and human activity on the beaches, as well as predators, including foxes, skunks, domestic cats, and dogs. Um, but it is possible to protect them and increase their numbers through monitoring and education, as oftentimes people just don't know that these birds are endangered. In shape, um, so the SBC position works uh, in uh, with the Maine Audubon Shorebird Program to protect these birds. So my goal is to increase community engagement as well as inform the public. Um, I am actively looking for volunteers. So if you or anyone you know is interested in this cause, please let me know and I'm happy to give you my contact information or a flyer which has my contact information. And uh, it also has a QR code on it which will lead you to the, to the um, Town of Kennebunkport website. Um, so I also wanted to give everyone an update on the piping clover numbers for this summer at Goose Rocks Beach. So you'll have to forgive me, these numbers are incorrect. This is last week's data. I have an update for this week's data. Um, so there were a total of 17 attempted nests so far on Goose Rocks Beach. Um, there's one nest that is still incubating on the west end of the beach. Uh, nine nests have hatched and seven nests have been predated upon. Um, we actually learned today, unfortunately, that uh, one of the nests down at Dingy Point was predated upon, um, likely due to human disturbance. Uh, when it's repetitive and close to the nest, oftentimes the adult will abandon the nest and this leaves the nest available and open to predators. So that is unfortunate, but we do have 13 fledged chicks or pecking clumpers, sorry, and for those of you that don't know, fledged means they have the ability to fly. Um, and there are still 16 chicks running around uh, Goose Rocks Beach. Sure. <laughs> Wait, um, they, 
Um, oh, and this, these are just uh, maps of the nest locations. I wanted to give everyone kind of a visual of where they are. So um, it's a little hard to see, but um, it, again, this is uh, not the updated information. So this is last week. So some of these uh, colors are incorrect, but yellow um, means the nest is still incubating. Red is a lost brood or nest. Orange is um, hatched or brooding, and green is fully fledged. So my future plans are to get volunteers. Um, I'll be tabling down at Goose Rock, Rocks Beach to inform and educate visitors, as well as hand out flyers, um, which will uh, give people information on how to volunteer and ways to get uh, connected with this cause. Um, I'm organizing an event with the Lewis T. Graves uh, Memorial, or Lewis T. Graves Memorial Public Library, um, which will most likely be an educational session, uh, but could also be um, interweaved with an existing event. And I'm in contact with the Parks and Recreation Department to develop educational sessions for children to get them involved and hopefully their families involved um, on shorebird conservation. <laughs> And I just wanted to end this little presentation with some pictures of Blue Shark Beach's very own piping plovers. We got a nice mid-stride shot here. <laughs> and a um, little hard to see, but I'll point them out. Here's the adult, and these are the chicks. They are tiny and they are adorable. And I also wanted to mention, um, just as an aside, that uh, they, um, Maine Audubon is currently looking for volunteers um, to identify migrating birds, identify and list migrating birds. Um, they're going to start coming in and they typically stop in uh, Maine's coastal ecosystems, whether that's on the shore or marshes. Um, so if this is something that you are interested in, please let me know and I'm happy to relay that information to you. Um, Thank you so much for your time. And does anyone have any questions? Are you um, doing any interacting of kids' education with the community house? I'm not yet, but that is something at that fun location with kids at the beach. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. That is some. That's a place that I would like to get connected with. Yeah. So, but if, so freaking birds is the same. So there are um, 13 fledged. Clovers, so they were hatched this summer, and there's 16 chicks still running around the beach. So that's a total of 29 right now. And also, they have um, there was 11 pairs of adult clovers on uh, Goose Rocks Beach. And no, I saw a bunch of them the other day. Yeah, yeah they're from the West End. Yep, yep. There's a lot of them down at the West End. Tiny little. They said I, I'm like the size of a cotton ball. <laughs> yeah. Okay. yeah. yeah. Just curious how the numbers compare to last year. Yeah, so um, right now we are on track to, I, I can pull up the exact numbers for you in an email. Um, we are on track to be above last year, but below the year before that. Um, I, I, I would have to look at the email to give you the exact numbers, but if you are interested, I can do that. Anyone else? Three this rock if all of these chips live. This rock will do better this year than my stupid person. Yeah, it's very good. Thank you. Thank you so much for your presentation. Thank you. Okay, Bill, we're going to turn it back to you. We will back in. Thank you. Instead of the sweat, I should not go back to the chest. It's the second half of natural research. And well, don't expect a PowerPoint. No, okay. Ever. Okay. Fair enough. Thank you. Um, <laughs> um, um, I probably can't see the large folder behind me, but I spent a couple hours with the former chairman of the committee, Paul Hogan, who many of you may know, and has been very involved with the dune restoration and, well, just. Too, too, many, too numerous to say how many uh, 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 things he's done at the beach. He's, he's, uh, he's, a, he's a workhorse when it comes to doing anything. I'll tell you that for talent. Um, I, I just wanted to share a little anecdotal data because I walk the beach basically every day and I know there's been some concern about people going into doing this and you know, not paying attention to the twines, the signage and all that stuff, but 
I kind of watch really closely, and, and I've been walking on, you know, when the beach is crowded. I like to walk at low tide, but I've been walking when the beach is fairly crowded, and I haven't seen anybody that's been a problem either. And it's been very, uh, I mean, the beach has been packed, obviously. And it's uh, been very, uh, very heartening to me that uh, people seem to be staying out of the duties and all the work that the, the town and the Conservation Trust and people like Paul did, you know, all the all the volunteers, many of you probably helped uh, plant the seagrass. Um, but that was, uh, that was a big thing because the, the, you know, the dunes along the whole stretch from Dingy Point to Sand Point got, got decimated this year. Um, the dunes at the West End actually got built up, so it's kind of weird. What's that? Yours did, mine did. Well, I, I'm, I'm not on the beach, but uh, I'm, I'm across the street from the beach. I had I had water all around my house in, in January, so it was uh, very exciting. Um, um, I've been a little bit, not concerned, but um, Paul and I were talking in depth about the water quality and uh, the town's website and, and, and access to it. I talked to John earlier before the meeting that the, a lot of the barcodes don't work on the side, so he's going to have some stickers put up. I mean, I, I scanned them all, and about half of them went. So most of them, if people hold their cell phones up to them, they're not going to get any information on them, which is, you know, a bit of a concern for me, although you can always you know, go to the town's website manually and you get the information. Just It was just nice. The barcodes that work, it took me right to the right to the beaches, Healthy Beaches website, and I could go straight down to... Uh, you know, to goose rocks and find the information. So I, I, I found it, I'm very non techy so I found it very easy to do. Uh, with it. So, well, uh, and um, um, I don't really have anything else except to say that uh, Paul had sent out an email last night to all the, after our meeting, to all the meeting, all the people on the subcommittee um, that, um, you know, hey, that they, I think most of them were going to stay on. I don't know if, I don't know if I've seen, we saw John. Greater here. I don't know if he's going to stay on or not, but uh, hopefully he will, because um, it's just it's just good. It's a it's a it's an important part of the beach, and um, um, I'll have a report every month. I'm not sure. It won't ever be like that, Emily. Sorry, um, but uh, Dave said good. So, <laughs> but uh, if anybody has any questions, I'll I'll try to answer them. I have a I have a ton of information to Paul that I've just started from Paul that I've just started going through. So I'm not even sure I'm officially right. Like, Chair, but okay, okay. I was, I was just, Get back out now. Well, I won't back out now, but it's uh, so May I asked which subcommittee because I didn't go to email. I usually get natural it. resources. Oh, I made an S. Yes, so the way I John, just give your contact information I available. Like, sure, it's a direct. Oh, okay, great. Thank you. Um, Nemesis Communications, Holly, great. Thank you. Um, Nice seeing all of you here by your first and first meeting. So I'm now heading up communications. So please come see me after the meeting if you want to be on the email list and I'll get your email address and make sure that you guys are included. Um, and we'll be re-looking at how we want to communicate out a lot of things. Thank you. Um, where's Cliff? She knows how to do it. Where's like girl? She's our new tech person. <laughs> That's great. Now, thanks a lot, Holly. Um, the next committee report is uh, Kate on the trash subcommittee, so mm -hmm. do on to that. Okay. Um, many of you here might not know about why we have a trash subcommittee. Exciting subcommittee, but um, just to quickly, we're going to do uh, more information on this at the August meeting, which I think is the 19th. Yes, something like that. So come to that. But. Just as a summary, uh, the town's existing trash contract with Casella expires at the end of the summer. Right on that, John? Wait. Correct. So yeah, they've been, the town has been negotiating for a while to get a new contract in place. And again, the contractor will be Casella, uh, but there will be some significant changes in how the trash is handled in town. Um, I'm just going to report at the moment about the one we've been working on, most importantly, this summer. That the, none of these changes will go into effect until after this summer. However, net, we're basically talking about what's going to happen at the beach front, where we have X number at each beach entrance, we have a trash barrel where people are supposed to use to put their refuse in. What's it said? Well, um, 
next year, right now, this year, the trash is picked up by a two-person truck, the old-fashioned way. Somebody gets off the truck, upends the bin, and also picks up the various pieces of debris, sometimes broken beach chairs, broken umbrellas, or just plain old trash that people leave outside the bin, either because it doesn't fit or it's too full, and they just don't bother. So uh, next year, when by the time next summer rolls around, the Casella will go to a single operator trash truck. You may have seen them in other towns. There will not be a separate person getting off and moving the bins in. They will be using a robotic arm to pick the bin up and empty it. It'll be probably a different size, bigger bin, different com configuration to it. But the important part is that there will be nobody picking up what is left surrounding the bin. If it isn't in the bin, it's going to remain there. So we are looking at this summer, uh, focusing this summer on an education program to see if we can actually get people to put the trash in the bin and if it doesn't fit to carry it away um, because it is possible if we can't solve that problem the town may have to consider going taking away all the beachfront trash bins and going to a carry in carry all uh, policy which is happening in other towns in this area and at various national and state parks etc it's not a brand new never heard of so the first thing we did, thanks to Fred Stafford's brilliant uh, design skills, um, is we had stickers made up that looked at the top half of this, the happy little lobster, and telling people, trash must go in the bin, do not leave anything on the ground. Okay, so that's already been for, since I guess 4th of July in the week at least, or before that, those have been on the, the beach trash bins. Um, in terms of how well it's working, uh, I certainly 4th of July week, I would not say it was a huge success. I did check the bins, uh, you know, up and down on early mornings from some of the 4th of July celebration days. It wasn't too great. Uh, the other this morning, actually, I did, when I was walking my dog, I did check up and down the beach and it looked much better. There was only one beach chair left at the Dyke Road entrance and one at the Jeffreys Way entrance. Everything else is clean. <coughs> Yay, people. What we're doing now, we've expanded on that, um, that uh, sort of clever little eye-catching lobster and put together a flyer that gives a little bit more information about why this is important, about the fact that we are going to be going to a different robotic arm system, and if we can't clean up our act this summer, we might have to look at whether we just uh, take away trash barrels for next summer. And hopefully this uh, will be distributed. I know the realtors, um, uh, Sand Dollar and Maritime, are, are sending it out to their, putting it in their various rental cottages. Uh, the town, we hope we'll be working with them to put it with, uh, send it out to their short-term rental permit holders um, and maybe put it on the town website. Anyway, we can try and get the information out there. So that's... Please try and make people aware of this, and you know, hopefully we'll still have trash barrels for next summer. And then by uh, by the August meeting, we will go into more detail about what are the other changes that are going to be happening, because there are some significant ones that will be happening to the trash program in Marie. Yeah, hi, Jenny Wallace. Oh, Jenny, sorry. Yep, six, six, six new six exactly this way. So, um, yeah, can there be? Can they? Can they put more more trash cans? Because right in front of my house is where is a huge number of people entered and they can't go on at Jeffrey's way. And um, I, I just envision either solution going to be a problem because if we, that current trash tent's very small. I mean, right. for the volume of people that enter between the Hill hills, a whole new group of people that enter there, it's, it's a lot of people. So can they do two trash cans? Even raise the theme for the trash bins that we will be using, the robotic army ones, I think those barrels are going to be bigger than the so existing It'll be the 96 gallon. Yeah. So okay. four okay. times the size. Oh, oh good. Yeah. Those are probably 64. It's twice. Yeah. And we, we'll have to check and see whether the larger ones, because a lot of the problems are not, except there was during 4th of July wings, some basic beer cans and things like that, but a lot of the problems are things that are too big, like boogie boards and broken uh, bleach chairs and things like that. And it'll be interesting to see whether they can fit in the newer trash barrel so again that might uh, alleviate the problems of people not wanting to take the stuff away we'll see we'll see oh.
Yes, Edward Train on 14 Preston Avenue, Rivera Vista. Uh, I, I thought I read somewhere that the distribution of the new barrels would take place in the fall. At, it, uh, was, it was the intent to uh, distribute in the fall. It may actually happen sooner. Oh. So well, the reason why I ask right. is many of us are up here for two or three months, right. and we're not necessarily here in the fall. Exactly the reason why we're trying to make it happen sooner. So we're working on the bits of an order. So we have, we have placed the order. The hope is it would depend on the delivery time. Uh, I can't give you a date because I don't want to promise something. But our intent is to have it done before late. That's our intent. And we can only do what we can do by depending on how fast these bids are produced. Actually. So I guess my, my second question is, what happens if you don't get them in time and they're not going to be distributed till after participants? We will cross that bridge when okay. we get it. Thank you. It's been, and it's back there. Hi, I'm Ray Snapdown at the 16 Northside Drive. So, we'll go to our newly constructed house at West Dust Bay. Uh, that made three calls to Casella, three to the town, and we'll walk into the town to sell to get my trash pick company. I've been told I have to drag it down to see what the corner plants have. However, Hillside Ave now has four houses on it, two to be sold, much. With Pell the Sack and Pax. Pell the Sack, uh, excuse me, Casella said, we don't go up there. Casella said, our driving rental will come at Sirhead. And the town, I'm sorry, but that's the exit. So, me and myself, this, this winter, if they don't come back out those big battles, I'm going to have to drive them down the street while it's nice and snow. And I just don't understand why with a cul-de-sac, the trucks cannot go up there. I think that may be an issue for us possibly addressing if we can at the... I don't mean to push you up because I don't have an answer for that. Well, I think it's because it's a push of the cell that really yeah. makes that cell because when you leave Kings Highway to travel, Kings Lane, I was told we don't serve as private battles. Okay. Ocean Ave, Benson Ave, Kings Lake, every host put their trash out. Well, they do. But it did not go up mm -hmm. the other side. Yikes. Yeah. I suspect we may face a number of issues like that. I've heard but about people having, or having to drink about, if, especially if larger families, which are already getting, even a smaller version of them and bigger than they think they're what's most of must have in a household right now. And it certainly it used to be a dead end all the time. I ain't saying that. Yeah. But now it does on the whole side. Okay. Thank you. So many mm -hmm. left on Just a, a real quick question. Uh, is is there gonna is there gonna be some mechanism in this, uh, for picking up for getting rid of all our old ends once we get to yes. the one? Yes, there will. Thank you. Like this to you. Is it fair to say that under this new system, we'll be paying more than getting less. <laughs> well, I'm afraid the fair thing to say is it beats nothing at all, all to hell. And that's all we've got is Casella uh, with the automated system. So, uh, yeah, you want, it's a perspective. I, I can't say how I would look at it. You have a one large bin that can take four of your, three of your smaller 32 bins. And it's, you know, it's a trade-off, but it is a necessity. This wasn't a choice by the town. And it was either this contract or no contract at all. So it is fair to say we're paying for it. <laughs> Again, it's your perspective. If that's how you fit, you don't agree with that? Well, I really haven't weighed it. Be honest with you. Don't wait. Do you have to watch your light? Any other questions on the... The, this is today's trash report. Just going with this yeah, right. with my peace of mind. But, uh, I'm sorry. So we're going to look into it, but... Uh, it's going to Is that my name and address for it? Okay. It's not any problem. Again, one, one thing I think it's important to point out, uh, mm -hmm. that this committee uh, and we'd be pleased to carry that forward for you, but it's really not the role of this committee uh, to be working on issues of 
of, of the trash pickup around town. Uh, the trash barrels at the beach are probably a marginal feast. I think I could argue they are in the Purdue Youth Committee. But if we talk about speeding on the roads, uh, if we talk about you know flashing, flashing signs, these are important issues and uh, things that need to be handled, but can really aren't appropriate to go through this committee. This committee's role is to work under the auspice of the beach use agreement and the ordinance that was passed to enforce that agreement. Uh, and we really need to be sure that we stay within those bounds and we put the issues to the to the appropriate people. The back of the paper. So, it, hey, has your committee contacted any private and our disposal firms? To no, we did this, as I said, on our trash subcommittee. Really, uh, I'm dealing strictly like with the issues that the actual contracting part, and John can correct me on this because he's more, he was certainly more in part of it as a member of the select public. Uh, the Beach Advisory Committee played no role in sending out a request for proposal for new, contra or new contractors' offers or anything like that. So we're dealing with what, I mean, the town has worked on that, and as John said, fortunately only one proposal apparently came in. So we're not, uh, you know, it didn't it sounds like not a whole lot of wiggle room. So the answer is, yeah, we as the committee here certainly happy to listen and if where we can pass information back or John is the guest person on that to look into things. But how are you trying to solve the We're trying to solve the problem of our most immediate problem is the beach issue. The beach the beach entrances and asking people to help with the education on that so we're not hopefully faced with the choice of taking those, of recommending that those trash barrels be taken away, but they'll still be an amenity that's there. At the end of the day, public doesn't cooperate. The beach, that you points will be us. And if that's the case, if that looks what, what, what happens this summer, uh, the committee will then discuss that particular issue and whether to rate and call sometime, whether to make a recommendation to the select board that, in fact, all of those trash barrels be removed. In which case, it's how no get trash there would be no trash barrels, and hopefully, uh, you know, people would get the idea. Hey, bring it in. You have to take it out. I agree. I shake it. Oh, your head absolutely it. not. Uh, there will always be people. There will always be people who will, um, shall we say, not cooperate or think first and foremost about what's important to them. That's not what this community normally is about. And as I said, the fact that I saw today. When I went the um, the rent, the lengths of the East End trash barrels, just a curiosity to see what they look like, I was very impressed and much more pleased than I was when I looked at it during Fourth of July week. Now Fourth of July week is probably the busiest week of the summer here. So, and you know, Jenny's suggestion maybe we look into whether at certain times we need more than one trash barrel because they are really full by the night time. When I looked at them, the first thing in the morning, they were on. Pretty darn fault. Did it ask school to consider the for two or three or four? Those are things we have to talk about. We'll discover this is premature to discuss that. Yeah, we have to. Yeah, switch into Let's that. wait until we see what the overall look, looks like over the course. And John, I was going to ask you separately, maybe, is there any possibility, do you think, that we could get some feedback from Casella as to their what they're finding? I mean, I've gone and on certain days when I'm down walking the dog, I do make a point of going the whole week to see what they look like early in the morning, like on a Monday after a weekend. Yep. You can, we can ask, okay. you can ask Jack. That would be helpful because otherwise we would have more information sure. to base whatever recommendations we've come up with. How many, how many days a week in the future are they not? Every day. Even with the automated ones? Mm -hmm. Yes, oh, absolutely. Wow. It's got okay. to be every day. Okay. And there'll be larger bins. And they'll have a flip top which makes it much easier to put larger items in. Okay. So, of course, it makes it easier to blow over and spill it. It's going to be interesting. You will be, don't worry. It's right. the market. Thank you very much, Keith, and an ongoing conversation here. Um, I'm going to move on to old business, and I think, you know, we have had a commercial activity on the beach conversation each meeting, and I always ask John for an update on that. And Well, can you tell us? Well, actually, some, some good news. We've had uh, several meetings. There's a group of us that had met with uh, EOS uh, uh, regarding the issue of, of the tides. Uh, 
I think we're making some good progress. Uh, I hope you'll, uh, I, I wonder, I hope you'll agree with me. My feeling is that things are quite a bit better this year in terms of the number of chairs and the placement of the chairs. It's clear to me when I have looked that they are trying hard to stay uh, within their bounds. Do we have everything we want yet? No. Are we still working on it? Yes. Um, might this end up in, in a legal tassel? Yes, it might. Uh, we're hoping to avoid that, but that's basically where we are, and kind of as much as I'm really able to say at this point. You know, you so, can I make a short? Yep. Maybe we're, we're not familiar with what the broader issue was. I thought they were looking for some additional non conforming use. Just give it a You're saying it's just making sure they abide by the that, determined sorry, space? That's certainly a piece of it. And non conforming use is a rather, it's, it's legally a very difficult and complex piece. And that's why this hasn't been solved instantly. We have not taken that off the table. That is still being discussed, but it's a matter of trying to find a way that we can reach a mutual uh, agreement that protects our rights as a beach and allows them to perform some reasonable level of business, which they have had established in it for a while. What right? What rights do they have? I'm really not able to take it any further. Thanks for understanding. Oh, understand. so. You're one of the first dollars. Professor Sakin, maybe a shake Okay, thank you, John. Breakfast. Um, I think so. Kate, I'm sorry, did you want me to ask another question? What to be this? Um, as Kate alluded to, the next meeting that we have scheduled is August 19th here, and trash is going to be the primary focus of that meeting. So, um, that'll be an interesting conversation. So, it's a big um, thing. The, uh, I, what I'd like to do now is really adjourn the business section and move on to um, Gail and Weebly is going to join us as the director of planning and development for the town to talk about to do flood maps. Um, so I would take a motion to adjourn from the business part of this. To each of the so moved. Second. 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 Okay. All those in favor? Okay. Thank you. Um, Gail is here. Um, and so he is going to kind of give us an update on the flood maps. I think there's a lot of information in here, and it'd be interesting. And hopefully, we can do because the questions are how much one you got the well fishing. Yeah, perfect. Thank you. A little bit of guess. She is going to edit the full screen later on. Obviously, don't worry about it. Don't seem to sit down. Is that okay? Yeah. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for the opportunity to speak with you tonight. Uh, thank you, Pam, for the invitation. I appreciate it. I think this conversation and presentation that's in front of you today is quite timely uh, since the new floodplain maps are taking effect this week. Um, so I'd like to just go get a quick overview of what is the flood insurance rate maps. And so the flood insurance rate maps, is some of you are familiar, uh, these were designated by the federal government way back when uh, to help uh, assess flood risk um, for certain areas of our uh, community and across the country. And so they designated these risks based off the annual percentage of a possible flood taking effect in your community. And so uh, there are certain zones that are a 1% chance, which is what we traditionally call a 100 year flood. Uh, that's a kind of a misnomer because that 1% is a probability. Um, you could have four um, of these events in, in one year, or you could have one of them in every 200 years. So it's just a 1% variable. We'd like to get away from that um, other term. The other one is a moderate risk, which is a 2% annual uh, chance of flooding, and then anything less than a 0.2% chance of flooding is considered a low risk. 
Um, and so what does this help with besides um, determining if you have to take flood insurance and have to get flood insurance, um, what your premiums are for those flood insurance? It also helps you in planning for an eventual flood event that may take place in your industry. What do you do about evacuation strategy? What do you do for um, preparation in case you're stranded or landlocked? And so um, they are very useful for the community. Uh, the town of Kenny Boatport has actually been involved in the, uh, with the adoption of the uh, flood maps and the National Flood Insurance Rate Program, and that has been in effect since 1983. So the next section is what's new with the flood maps. Um, so the last time the flood maps were updated was in the 1980s, and I have a snapshot to show you and go back and forth with the new ones. Uh, but essentially, you're going to see reorganization of the panels. They got a major face lift. Um, they got tilted north, direction of a true north map. Um, and they also show, they shifted the panels a little bit across the state. Um, so that's important to see. There's also better overlay of the aerials with delineations. So now there's actual satellite layers that you'll get to see actual houses and try to figure out where you are. Whereas before, it was the blank slate and you had to sort of guess where you are in the flood maps. Um, there's also a new designation of what's called a Linwa. This is a limited, a, a limit of moderate wave action. It's a DMARC tool that's used to help uh, show how far in land, landward, that the waves uh, may impact your properties moving forward. There was also an alphabet soup in the old um, flood, flood maps that you know, was hard to, to understand and so they simplified it with uh, a few less zones. And there was also an expansion of the flood hazard in short land zoning. So that's important for a lot of you. You'll see that the flood, uh, where the flood zones have gone and creeped in, you might now be in the resource protection area in our uh, local uh, short land zoning. And that might impact you for vegetation removal and other types of things. So I know this is hard to see. I can get the PowerPoint to the committee and you can share it amongst your members if it's helpful. Um, this is the old 1980s map. Um, and so to give you a general orientation, you have the King's Highway that's down around here. And then you have Bel Air, Belvedere, Bel Belvedere, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's terrible. Belvedere. Belvedere. Belvedere and uh, Edgewood uh, down here in the three to help you have an orientation. And so the old maps you'll see had a shading system. And so this was the velocity zone that's right near Goose Rock Speech. Um, you'll see the A2, which was the 100 year uh, flood zone area. And again, that went on through the, the major tributaries, and there was the coastal wetlands in the way back. Um, and so if you go to the next slide, this is the new updated maps. Um, and to give you some geographical references here as well, there are the three uh, roads we were talking about, and there's the King's Highway. Um, all of this is now in the 100 year. Where if we toggle back, oh. you'll see that there was a good section that was not shaded in. So it wasn't part of the 100 year uh, flood zones. And so we go forward. And so right through here is the Linwa. That's the triangle piece. So if you look at our new panels that are online, uh, that's how far the wave action could potentially go inland um, to give you an idea. And then each area will have an A zone and then it'll have the elevation of how far uh, contour wise um, is in that general vicinity for your flood risk. And again, base flood elevation, you would go two feet above that to help you in understanding for new construction. Mm -hmm. um, the elevation changes also, this is the federal one that is taking place on July 17th. So this week it is going to take effect. The town has been late to the game in adopting our flood maps, um, and that was by design. Uh, we disagreed with the federal government on what they determined the flood risk actually was. Um, we hired a uh, specialist across all of New York County, and we shared the cost to hire this expert to obtain our case to the federal government. Um, we won our case, um, and so our amendment language is going to take the place the day after. So that'll be July 18th. Mm -hmm. And so I'll show you a little difference uh, between the two. Um, a couple things to keep in mind. If you look at where the Limwa is, you're going to see it's going to change a little bit. You flip it. So, I mean, it's quite, you can see the limb has changed a little bit. Your elevations have also changed as well. So how high you have to go um, has changed. And you also notice that there are some areas, especially um, on Goose Rock Beach, that are sort of set up on a hill right on King's Highway. And they are outside of the coverage area now. So 
Some of you might have insurance companies that might be saying you need flood insurance, um, but maybe you're outside of that zone with the change in the one day. We have offered people letters of correspondence for your insurance, uh, insurance providers. Uh, to explain the situation to them if you are one, indeed one of these uh, property owners that might be impacted. Um, that is a, and it also explains here, this, you can see with the revised panel, um, we had a revised area put in there uh, so you can see that this is the most updated one. Um, I think that is, that's the major differences for you. So what's next is on July 17th, the federal one will take effect. July 18th, the LOMAR, which is the town's amendment language, will take effect. What I will say is all the panels can be found on the town's website. I will use a word of caution for anyone that lives in the coastal panels for the town to please use the LOMAR panel for the coastal. Um, it's imperative for that because I still have the federal ones on there because they are technically enacted, so we have to publish them and let people know. But there are the Lomar, you'll see it on there, it'll say Lomar panel, you just pull it up and it'll show the entire letter from FEMA that says, hey, this was new, this is adopted. Um, you please use these maps. And you should be able to zoom into those um, pretty, pretty uh, in high, they're high def PDFs. Uh, so they're, labeled? Yes, they are labeled. Down labeled? Yep, okay. yep. Yeah, yeah. And they will have, and again, you'll notice too, that most of the street names are actually labeled on the new um flood maps versus the old one some of them are private brains and stuff so it, it is a lot easier to identify they are on the town's website you can go on the departments planning and development and there's the fema flood maps so right on the home screen you just go down to departments you see planning and development and you'll see fema flood maps you can click there um, or you can always use the hyperlink that'll be in the pdf um, the other thing to mention is in our town gis if anyone has used our um town gis uh infrastructure it is a unique tool not all towns have that um and it's a really uh, great tool that shows the uh 0.2 percent which is the moderate risk and the one percent risk and so anything that's not shaded by the way is it's not it's a low risk area to help you um understand that so um that's a general view and you can access those layers under the flood maps layer and just hit the button to turn it on and it, it'll appear in pink i believe it is pink and yellow so with that, um, that's a quick overview um, of the new changes. I'm more than happy to answer any questions that you might have. Do you, do you have a lesson post? Yes, I just I just have a comment more than I was going to. Our, uh, we, we've never had flood insurance. We've lived the way we have for at least six years. And um, our house was surrounded by water, so my wife insisted we look at it. And the insurance quote we got was phenomenal based on floodplain maps. But when we actually had a surveyor give the elevations of our first floor and basement, it went from 11,000 to 3,000 on. So I just want people to know that de de despite what the floodplain maps say, your insurance companies, or you may want to ask your insurance companies if your insurance is really high, if having a survey done and getting the actual elevations of the floor, because that's really what they care about. The insurance company. Yep. And that, that's a good point to bring, bring up because um, there are times where, you know, the contours that they're using are from the USGS. They're back from the 1920s in some cases. So those contours are not 100% accurate. Um, so definitely if you want to, if you think you're close to that uh, area where they're like, you know, you're in the flood, you're in the flood zone, but maybe not. It's always good to hire an expert. And you can also um, follow your own amendment language. So individuals can petition the federal government saying, I don't think I'm in the floodplain. Um, I, I, I want to petition this. And you can hire an expert engineer and take your case to the federal government. And people do win. We have multiple amendments from across uh, the town that have been adopted by the federal government. So they're by no means are perfect. Yeah, how would you characterize January 30th? Would that be a 1% or a 2% or? That's, that's a quite a, a high anomaly, so that would probably be a 500 years or I mean, It's not something that is, you know, or, it's, there was a historic proportion there, especially with the king tides that was impacting in the, the high snow melt. Um, so that played a factor into all of that. Yeah. Yes. Okay. What do you got? Uh, you the state perspective? Good question. So state law just changed uh, that required any individual to disclose if they are in the flood zone. That is new legislation this year. That's 
I was going to mention that I'm looking around, perhaps many of the people here do not have a mortgage on their property right now, but if you do, and whether you've been in a flood zone or not, depending on the changes, it's a good chance you're going to hear from the company servicing your mortgage because they may tell you you are now required to have flood insurance. Or conversely, you may find out that the flood insurance you were required to have the low of the people So, uh, and, and they may not do it right away, but many of them may do a flood audit, have a company come in and relook at every single loan they are servicing to see if that property is in a required flood area. So don't be surprised, but well, it could be good news, but very likely it's a few bad news that you're going to have to have flood insurance. If you don't have a mortgage, if you don't, you're on free and clear, like you consider that we the South first on will make whether or not you now want to have it versus going bearing risk on your own. But your homeowner's insurance generally will not cover it. It's a type round worker invades your house. That's May cover rain comes through your uh, roof, but not groundwater coming in. And it's important to note too, even if you don't want flood insurance or you're not required to have flood insurance, it's always good to start planning um, because maybe you're one of those one of those areas where you're on a higher elevation, but you're still near King's Highway, and so it can be flooded. And what's your evacuation strategy? So it's good to start proactively planning now, um, so that you're protected in the future. See, Sherry. Any defense? Yeah. Hey, winter song was a modern kind of action change. Do we know the new? Yes, the live law did change. Yep. So it did. It did change. It went more uh, towards the sea. It was a lot less. I don't know if we can spring that back up. <laughs> I just shut it. You can see it. You, you can see it. And not again. You, I'll I'll share the PowerPoint. You can see the difference. And it did go. The the towns was a lot less uh, severe than what uh, the federal government had. And that's going to impact people with construction as well. So. Um, for the, the Limois, uh, it's a one and a half foot additional elevation increase that you have to move the structure up because of the wave action. Um, so some folks may not have to go as high uh, building wise, and that's always appreciated for construction purposes. Yes. Uh, you said before that if the storm last January was a building five on the year storm, uh, I'm looking for a little confidence. Are you saying? <laughs> I am not an expert. Are you saying that it's very likely to test the environment experience and anything like that? Is that already what did? I can't. I don't have a crystal ball. Um, but what I can tell you is, from what I've gathered from loan bulls that have been here, that was quite a anomaly for a storm. Um, I, and again, I haven't been a local all my life, but. That's what I was told is that flooded Dock Square, a lot of other areas that never really experienced flooding before, uh, and you all are aware of that. So it was quite a naughty yeah. map. Yeah, so it's a good couch. Uh, that, yeah. If you go back to the, uh, December of 22, for what they call the 100 years, we've had 300 year floods in the last you know, 16 months. Yeah. So yeah. just to, just so you know, yeah. that's yeah, it's yeah. certainly more frequent than it was then. Yeah. Because our winter, we're getting rain, but used to be some no. Yeah, stand up. And that's likely, in my opinion, it's a big thing. Lots of rain is puke and kinky. I think, I think you're seeing that in the federal medals, that they're all increasingly going more landward. Well, no. Well, what's the uh, town's position on raising homes? I know there's a height limit, but are they, we're, we're encouraging people, I think, to raise their homes. And is the town going to increase the height overall height limit so state law does allow you to go above the height limit um you still have to get dep approval because uh dp especially on frontal and back dunes there's a 35 foot height limit um so they still have to review it um but we do allow i believe it's three feet above no. our fire flight our height elevation which would be uh 35 feet so you could that's uh, 33 that would be the new lot what would be 33 cool we have 30 uh it's 30 yeah but then broadcast is that one thing um basic system they will not very say this but but i'm concerned about the what are emergency and evacuation when we had something like that is there is there a committee already that's activated to do this because i had great difficulties 
I knew information on that when, they, when this spark came up, but it was out of town. So. Yeah, I know that Public Works, uh, the Fire Department, and uh, the Police Department are discussing that. Yeah, yeah, they are discussing you know, evacuation and what routes to use and all that. How could they? Yes. All right. If I have another question, <laughs> the, the response also for the immediate, especially for, I, I don't know, it affects everybody, but for those of us on the, on the beachfront, um, or we have state involved, so we have town involved, so we have a minute effect. So, so it makes it very complicated. You're dealing with a lot of people um, to, to do simply immediate to help restore the dents. Now, I know what's been done, and I've talked to all those people, and, and hopefully, I mean, John, maybe I'm saying the wrong thing, but uh, the task force, is that still, that somebody I should be in touch with? Oh, are they working on something, or is that just, uh, are we still in an education process? No, the, that is certainly one of the strategies that has been adopted as part of the climate action plans. Okay. So the task force is in the process of uh, uh, looking at some recommendations we might provide to the board, but it's the board of selectmen yeah. that will be directing the task force as to which things to work on. All right, so I'll but, follow up. But that's that. certainly an important one, and the more we can make it known to the board that that's something you're interested in, the yeah. better the options that that will be chosen for a, an early pursuit. Yeah, and I guess just getting these people together to, to, to get it out, and it's gonna be key, right? And they're getting. Right. John? Yes. Well, um, when they built Timber Road, they put a gate there in the end of it. And the key to that was supposed to belong to emergency service so that they could unlock it if they needed to get an emergency vehicle through there. January 13th, we were wondering why those gates kept closed when the people down King's Highway could not get out because the bridge was underwater. It's falling. Boat bridges. Yeah. You, need, you need to help me understand what gate you're speaking of. Then she went. Yeah. Then she went. Then she went. Then she went. Then she went. she could have just ordered that way. Can I? No, that's true. Yeah. With that sort of thing. I'm all out of it. I have absolutely no idea. So I... Well, wander up there sometime to see a white gate and it's got a lock on it. I can picture it now. Yeah, I'll okay. picture it now. And I don't know who's got the who's, key to the lock. I don't know who's locked that in. I don't even know who's locked it in. So yeah. this top, I will try to find out some information. Me? That's me. I'm going to shoot guys and be cut up. It'd be obviously what it is. You would drop me an email just so I have some, I can contact that to you to get some information for you. Sure. Great job, Shane. I look fun of freaking your life. Yes, that's so you couldn't get there. You couldn't get there. there. No, you could get to be there. Are there any more questions? Or like, I don't know. Is there a can then? There's no bit of young music. We're going to do it online. Yeah, I hope. We're trying to save. Do I find your beach? Yes, it's a. Yeah, and we appreciate your coming. We just want to be back on the music. Thank you. Thank you. So that's the end of our program.